Hi there, welcome back to the Caffeinated Classroom. If this is your first time here, my name is Marie. I'm a high school English teacher in San Diego, California, and I am actually back in my classroom. So this is the first video that I've done in a while uh, in my actual classroom and it has been a very long day. This is the second week that I am teaching like a hybrid concurrent situation where students are physically in my classroom, but like four to six, maybe eight at a time. I think the, eight, the most I have is eight. And then I, at the exact same time, am teaching on Zoom, and I know some of you have been doing this since like September and August, um, and it's just, it's just not, it's just not great. It's just, it's just not great. It's just like not good teaching, um, but we're figuring it out. Plans are probably gonna change because that's what seems to be happening in 2020 and 2021. And there we go. Um, but as I film this, it is March. And this is normally the time of year where I start to feel a little bit of an itch to start planning things for next year. And I start to get excited for like, how am I gonna change things up? And even just like, what am I gonna do to spice stuff up for the rest of the spring for my students who I have currently. And right here, right now, my creativity well is uh, pretty dry. It's, it's pretty dry because of this teaching situation and all of the changes in just the past 12 months. Um, and so I thought now's as good a time as any to talk about what I plan to do and where I normally look for inspiration and creativity to re-energize that part of me uh, when I'm feeling like this, when the well is dry and cracked and uh, ain't getting a whole lot out of it. So I'm going to tell you where I look for that kind of inspiration and what I get from it in hopes that it helps you find the same sort of a thing. So. Let's get started. Okay, so, like I said, well's pretty dry. I'm pretty gosh darn tired, emotionally, physically, spiritually, like I'm just tired. Um, and so sometimes when I am thinking like, uh, where am I even gonna find the creative energy, nonetheless, like inspiration or ideas, it almost seems like a daunting process to even look for inspiration. And so I'm gonna just tell you the places that inspiration just kind of comes to me. One of those places is through children's books. Lately, we've been spending a lot of time, I mean, so much of our days is on a screen and the same is true for my kids. If you're new around here, I have two kids. They are seven and a half and four and a half. You have to add the half if you know young children because like if I say seven and four, I've cheated them of six months of their life. Six months closer to their next birthday is basically what they're getting at. Um, but I've been reading a lot of children's books as we normally do, but there's just something about that time that's screen free that I cherish more and more and more after having lived through this this world of teaching through Zoom. Um, and some of those books have given me some amazing ideas for my classroom in the past, but even still now. So there, if, if you have seen the short film Hair Love by Matthew A. Cherry, um, he's not the only one, but he's like the first accredited director. There's a picture book made from the short film, which is an Academy Award winner. I had seen it when it won the Academy Award. We have the book in my house. And the other day I was reading, or gosh, the other day, it was like six months ago. I was reading the book with my daughter and I went, Oh my gosh, this is fantastic for my American Lit class. Like we can talk about identity. We can talk about all of these cool things with hair love. And they're the things that just, it just came to me. We were sitting in her bed at night and I was reading it to her before she went to sleep. There's a series of books also called A Kid's Book About, right? And it's a kid's book about racism, a kid's book about white privilege, a kid's book about feminism. Just last night I was reading with my kids a kid's book about feminism. And I'll link all of these in the uh, blog post that goes along with this video. I'm totally gonna bring it into my classroom as why I've been trying to think to myself, what's a creative way that I can talk about Women's History Month that my students haven't already seen, that doesn't feel really just like, I don't know, token, you know, like <laughs> just to talk about, like I, it's still March. I wanna talk about Women's History Month in a meaningful and mindful way. And we have been talking about like women in literature, especially since I'm an ELA teacher, but I wanted to like hit the nail on the head. And we're starting to get into a little bit of like word meanings and the etymology of words. And a, a kid's book about feminism will pair so perfectly with we should all be feminists the, I'm looking around to see if I have it with me. I will, it, it's a TED talk that was then turned into an essay. I will link that as well down below. These two texts that can come together will be phenomenal in talking about words, how word meaning is created, and at the same time, talk about women's history and the role of women in society and treatment of women and girls. And that all came last night 
from sitting in bed with my kids and reading a kid's book about feminism. So children's books is a big place that I look. I will sometimes just sit on my computer, I know, another screen, and scroll TED Talks. <laughs> Put in some random keywords and see what comes up, see what's trending, look at TED Ed videos, look at what's like the playlist that they have on YouTube and that sort of thing. And sometimes just seeing the titles of different TED Talks will start to spark some things in me. I'll watch a little bit here and there. We have the TED app on our Apple TV at home and sometimes I'll just scroll and look at that. And like, it doesn't take a whole lot of energy for me and creativity and inspiration kind of just strike. There is one and that's entitled, What Role Does Luck Play in Your Life? by Barry Schwartz, who is a um, professor at a college that I cannot remember. He's given a bunch of TED Talks. Like if you watch a bunch of TED Talks, you'll see him and go, oh, Barry. Um, and there's a playlist that, that also kind of came in my little like scrolling with this one TED Talk entitled, What is Privilege? It's a playlist of TED Talks. It's like four or five little compilation talking about privilege. That one we are going to be using in my classroom next year. What role does luck play in your life? We used last week, it was St. Patrick's Day. I took a moment to just be able to connect with my students and we started talking about luck and we started talking about how much do we believe in luck and like having a little healthy conversation and debate and that all came from me just scrolling through TED for like 10 minutes one day when I just needed a little brain break and I decided to see what inspiration might come. I think the biggest thing that I can say, and I still have a couple more places that I find inspiration, but what, one of the biggest things is when I am looking for inspiration, it doesn't really strike me. When I just open my mind and say, whatever comes will come, that's when things pop in and I go, oh, I could do a lesson on that. Oh, that would pair great with whatever text. So that's kind of one of the things is when you're pushing and looking for it, it's a lot harder to find. But if it finds you, you just gotta open yourself up to it, right? And these are the places that I open myself up. Uh, 60 minutes interviews that I see on like IGTV, uh, Oprah, old Oprah shows, that sort of thing. If I just kind of scroll through, if I'm watching something, things will pop up into my like, oh, I could totally do something about that. And sometimes it's the specific interview I'm looking at. Sometimes it's something having to do with it. Sometimes it's completely unrelated, but it just like pops into my head and I go, I could use this. Um, another great place, I already said IGTV, but Instagram, Instagram TV and Reels. Instagram Reels have been, well, they've been a rabbit hole that I fall down sometimes when I just need a minute, but they're also a great place of inspiration. There are a few accounts that I'm gonna tell you about where I either find inspiration because it just helps me clear my mind and then I have space for things to pop in, or these are people that like make me think of things or that share things that I can use. <laughs> the first two accounts I'm gonna share are farms. They are, they are women who live on or run a farm and there's something about seeing nature and farm animals and pretty pictures of eggs that like for some reason will help clear the cobwebs and just like defrag a little bit so that I have room to let inspiration in. One is Farm Lux um, and I will, I will put these in the post. Uh, and the other is Happy Days Farm. I just, it's happy. It's animals, it's nature, I love it. It helps clear my head. If that's something that helps you, I thought I would share. Um, and there are a couple of authors that I've been following. Victoria Aviard, she's the author of the Red Queen series and she has a new series come out called Realm Breaker that I can't flip and wait for, but she um, she posts a lot about being a, a, a working author and she posts a lot about uh, amplifying voices, marginalized voices, and she, she posts a lot of great stuff and I go, wow, I love following you and I love that my students love your books because I like you as a person. She brings me a lot of inspiration and creativity and then Nick Stone, the author of Dear Martin and Dear Justice and so many other things. Nick Stone is a phenomenal human and if I ever get to meet her, I will be, very fangirly awkward and so happy. I think she's an amazing mother, an amazing role model, obviously a fantastic writer. She's another person that like, I love that my students love her work because she's just great. You know, like there's like that added layer of like, she's just great. Um, and then lately I've been watching a lot of cosplay reels on Instagram reels and they are, popping these ideas into my head. These reels where they've got like cosplayers playing multiple characters from a story and then 
like lip syncing to pre-done like movie audio or whatever, right? They like act out scenes. It gave me this great idea for a really cool social media, like creating a story profile thing that my students actually started today in class with the book club groups, uh, groups and books that they are in that they've just started. Like it just like came out and I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a fun idea. So. Those are the ideas. Those are four of the places that I find inspiration lately. Children's books, TED and TED Ed, interviews like 60 Minutes or even like some NPR podcasts, and then Instagram, all the different apps within Instagram or like the different parts of it. Been helping to find me some places where creativity inspiration can kind of like fill a little bit more of the well because it has been pretty gosh darn dry lately. If any of these help you, let me know, give me a shout out on like, you know, on Instagram and tag me at the caffeinated class or send me a direct message or comment on this post or this video and let me know what is helping you or if there's something else. Like, yes. And I can add to that so that we can share the wealth and help each other find more inspiration and creativity because that helps me deal, frankly. And I have a feeling it helps a lot of you deal as well. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.